You don't have to cut this because I'm instantly going to draw on this. All right, Tao Shin, because you triggered this reaction from me as soon as you posted on the forum thread with your disgusting digits. But here's why I hate Tomb Raider. There's too many QTEs. Uh, only one way to do anything, so you can't, like, you know, avoid the mobs, even though it, like, like, strives to do that. Plus, there's simplified puzzles, like you're a fucking retard. There's a lack of control, so when you're, like, uh, for example, there's, the camera just goes everywhere and you can't move it. It's like playing Just Cause 2 when you fall down a hill, you can't move the camera at all. Um, there's a broken sense of morale values. I don't know what the fuck Lara is doing all the time. Bad enemy AI, that's another thing, really annoying. And the annoying voice lines like, Hey, she's over there, get her! And there's also another thing which is like, slow motion whenever you need a quick reaction. It's just hedonistic. Well, it's not hedonistic, it's just pissing annoying. Alright, Okay. Enough my rambling, let's do this. Are, are you finished? Yeah, okay, oh, introduction. Well, he gig spinning, and that means we're live. Welcome, scrubs, to Ratchet Radio, Art and Dawn's fortnightly podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by the Blackwind Marine Platoon, who've kindly donated rifles and sandbags to fortify the studio. Thanks, boys. It really helps keep the venture company off our backs. So sit yourself down and enjoy these four mooks blathering on and on for the next hour or so. Remember, boys, keep it short and sweet. Hello and good evening. I'm Therothal Lightcross, your Horde host. I'm Andrigo, I'm the Alliance host. And I'm Grumpo, the neutral host. And today we're joined by George Hartland, also known as Crowthorn, the leader of uh, Blackwood Marine Platoon. Good morning, foul be me. It's also Danish. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. a bit of diversity in the show for once. Yeah, finally. No, nice. uh, British people and yeah. Irish. Uh, it's the same island group people always confuse us. Disgustingly, okay. but there we go. You got your republic over there. Okay, let's go. Wonderful republic. First things first, we have a speech from our original guest, Aros, who decided to come with us this evening. Yep, we do, and I'm going to read it out, and hopefully not break down and die. Have you got water? I do have Robinsons. <coughs> I said before, I have Robinsons. Okay. okay. It's not. I've, oh, I've, 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 I had a pint, but I drank half of it. Sorry. So I might run out. Okay, here we go. I won't put on a voice because I'm not going to drain out. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Alright, ready? Yeah? We good? Yeah? Go for it. Alright, alright, okay. Hello, I'm Oris. While I'm not with you physically on this program, I'm being relayed for you in a form of text using my own personal sub-dimension. There should be a bit like that holographic two-pack shaker they did back a while back. You messed up there? Just with me, Oris. Not two-pack... Two-pack shaker. No, I can't rap. I've been asked to tell you to t uh, about the Spine of Kalimdor campaign, so I will just do. I will do just that. First off, what it is that makes the campaign different to those before? I'm glad you didn't ask that question because now I can answer it for you, regardless of your pleas for me not to do so. The thing that will probably make the Spine of Kalimdor campaign interesting will be the fact that its story will be based on, will largely be written on by the attendees. The different guilds, warbands, companies, packs, units, and other such people will find themselves in a region of Kalimdor we refer to as the Spine, stretching from the highest peak of Stone Talon to the furthest southern reaches of Feralis. Pardon me. Everything ends up in the region due to their own reasons and motivations, but once there, they will be forced by various circumstances into interacting with one another, and an interesting roleplayer will hopefully blossom as a result. In order to organize things a bit, though, I've, and encourage conflict with the opposite faction, I was. Well, thanks. What was that? You okay? What was that? Who was that? I, I have no idea. What was that? Um, you just made a crackling sound. <laughs> really loud crackling sound. Really? Yeah, and you're now really yes, loud. Yes, really. Good God. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll continue, thankfully. Yes, got to carry on. Carry on. I, I'm a terrible okay. sound man. Sorry. Carry on. Yeah. I've also produced a series of pre my storylines that girls can choose to pick up and dungeon master out if they wish to. Volunteer storytellers such as me can also do this and provide them to interested guilds, which is great if you happen to enjoy their dungeon mastered events or dungeon mastering. We've created a great variety of these storylines to pick up as well. If you enjoy sieges, demon hunting, detective work, fighting, artifact hunting, machine building, subterfuge, and ingredient gathering, we should have an adventure for you. Most of them have been carefully designed with the possibility of encouraging conflict with the opposite faction as well, making things a little more interesting, hopefully. They can be as excited as stopping sea giants from, and to from tossing wells over the lands, or as grim dark, um, realistic as gathering rare and dangerous ingredients, or holding a big uh, water wheel for your faction. 
If you want to throw a semblance of uh, mundanity out the window, one storyline you can pick up involves a vast horde of demonically corrupt kobolds with an incubus master who smells of chocolate and roses and shard flesh. Because of the open nature of this campaign and its unique and largely self-written storyline, practically any guild in in individual can take part in it if they find the reason to. The pre my storylines also dealt with the, as potential contracts that provide reason to come along to the, the, with the campaign. We probably have something for almost every alignment and faction. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to add uh, other than I hope it will be really good, and I really um, we really need lots of girls and volunteers for it. So if you want to take part, just pop on our forum thread and say hello. We'll be glad to take whatever you can offer. We're hoping that this campaign will encourage the communities of Argent Dawn to get off their feet and make excellent things both for themselves and those around them. And due to the campaign's immensely open format, practically any guild, alignment, race, or in character profession could find themselves here and have stuff to do. Because of this campaign is made collaboratively by those involved, it means that me and Perovicus can uh, quite hopefully go off scot free, though we have nothing Scottish people, or form incited drama or flaming. At least we hope, anyway. I just. I just hope people are kind, empathetic, and calm enough not to hate each other uh, like that. Since, I, um, since you might have a few questions, here's a convenient FAQ. Okay. I like RP PvP, but like my RP PvP with rules. What are the rules for this campaign? Thank you for asking. The truth is we were discussing this campaign in our test group. We found an overwhelming disdain towards having a single set of concrete rules for everyone. The problem with RP PvP combat rules is that we are trying to shepherd tens of not hundreds of players and their characters. Most combat restrictions tend to involve numbers such as damage, which we cannot always be controlled to the player. To make stuff worse, people in the campaigns tend to focus far more on their combat logs rather than what's happening in the character before them, sometimes just so as to call out those who are unintentionally breaking the rules. Resultantly, as they happen to be more immersed in the out-of-character universe than the in-character one. Because I roleplay on both sides, I can tell you that both factions are just as bad as each other, both equally break the rules. Both equally scream and rage about it, and in general chat both simply end up hating each other over a series of unenforceable, uncontrollable guidelines that only cause suffering rather than the order. Your character won't care about the orc that he's refusing to, that he's fighting caused um, 100, uh, 112,000 points of frost damage, and hopefully in this neither will any other. If you do like the rules though, participants are allowed and even encouraged to organise themselves in, for their own benefit, and, most, uh, and through the most random RP PvP will be without guidelines. I don't like griefers. How will you get rid of them? Thanks for asking me. Thank uh, thankfully, due to the said lack of rules, you're encouraged to gang up on them and destroy the foul trog demons with full force. Also, most of this campaign will probably ca be camp-based RP, so we hope it won't be too much of a problem. Though I must admit, even if there were griefers there, wouldn't be much we could do. I could have my friends PvP go to chase them as anti-griefers, but, pro uh, but the problem is m most people mistake these characters for actual griefers. It's probably best that... Like, 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 with all bullies, we simply ignore them. The all games feature might help as well in some cases. I want to AoE spam and, uh, no, I want to spam AoE and wield my twin blades of Xenolith. Can I do this? Yes and no. On one hand, there are no rules, so feel free to, uh, so free, but it's in place we've created a code of courtesy. Whilst you can cast Blizzard over an army, execute the wounded and lay waste, uh, to all in your path, you're encouraged not to. You are simply asked to be empathetic and see the battle from the opponent's point of view. So be polite. Leave off your phone when he's wounded. Check to make sure you don't kill low levelers and generally be nice and patient person. So everyone on the other side, while silent, will applaud you. On the contrary, doing the opposite will look cool from your perspective, but probably make everyone else help you hate your entire faction. Don't betray your friend's trust. However, since it's only a cold, there's nothing wrong with calling down a few infernals and ice lancing your way to victory. Though you really, really don't have to. Really. What about the truth? Uh, truths, I mean. I, I meant the truths. <laughs> it's appropriate that you should mention that. Since this campaign isn't really RP PvP campaign, but it can be the way if you want players want it, we probably don't need to uh, worry much about too much about that. Whilst the two factions are technically now at peace, it's not to dis uh, discount the covert, it's isolated skirmishes that can, can occur. There won't be anything uh, here of scale that you see Lord of the Rings properly, so I, uh, so, I, so I think we should be able to rest easy. One of the pre my storylines that even involves trying to stop the truce from being broken by someone plotting to co commit a heinous war crime, which, would sh which should offer some, um, something for the past bits out here. Alright, give me a moment while I drink. There we go. Doing good. Yep, yeah, I'm doing good. Bit, bit sweaty, but good. <laughs> Keep going, mate. Okay. Am I allowed to create my own material? I'd love to provide roleplay to other forms of storylines and initiatives, both big and small. Go ahead. This is your campaign. We're just here. We just provide the scaffolding. 
If anything, we'd highly recommend you share any stories you plan or on our forum thread so that other interesting guilds can chip in as well. This has probably only increased the levels of fun roleplay in the campaign, so go get out there and get going. Aorus, I dislike you, your character and everything you've created, especially Dirk. He's in that kind of orc. Will this be featured uh, will this campaign feature the Stormguard? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say for now. But read out some questions Wonderful. in the air. Uh, we may answer them sooner or later. And I'm not doing the rap. Not doing the rap? Not doing the rap. It's a really good rap. It's, it's a really good rap, but I'm not doing it. Well, just let's point out one last little postscript he's tagged on that um, the Spine of Kalenberg campaign will be two weeks long, starting from the 6th of April and ending on the 20th of April. And anyone is free to take part. Yay. So, with that done. Andrigo, let's hear your crappy alliance news. Oh lord, really? Crappy? Crappy? I, I hope it's got Night Nauru. In joke! Oh! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Okay, sorry, in joke. That was an in joke. Let's continue now. That might come up at some point. It might, yeah. Wonderful. Alliance news, go. Well, the alliance has a few events in the past fortnight, thankfully, compared to the previous dull periods that I had to report on. Um. We've had the Jade Fire Plague by the wonderful, wonderful Casperland and the Twilight Hammer in tow um, sweep through a lot, a surprising amount of the Eastern Kingdoms. Um, it was first swiftly dealt with up in the Plague Lands due to the wonderful work of the, the Martin Hold Accord and the never faltering, always eternal glare of Crusader Commander Corfax. That poor, that, that, those poor bugs. Those poor, poor bugs. I've never seen the cathedral actually filled with so many wounded and so many sick. This, um, it's been interesting. It's been very interesting to see how the community has handled an epidemic like this. I mean, it was a sickness, but it wasn't a terribly immediately apparently fatal thing. It was a fever. It was a general illness, which it was accompanied with um, insomnia, um, brief moments of insanity. It, 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 was, it was something that would wear people down. In a long term period. I like the sound of it. It reminds me of the uh, the Black Plague of 1606. You like the sound of this? Okay. I do like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I well, this yeah. is all I haven't like... actually involved myself in it because I don't go to Stormwind ever, but, you know. This, well, see, actually, this ties in with something else I was going to bring up as well. Because the mm -hmm. event that essentially concluded, if you will, the, uh, the Jayfire Plague, yeah. was on the same evening that we had the Alliance Recruitment Fair on Stormwind. And guess who participated in that? Today's sponsors and indeed, indeed our guests. Yes. Mickey, how did it go? He's not even there, is he? Oh, Mickey, wow. wake up! Here. Okay. Right here for you. Okay. The fair was rather enjoyable, though it was crowded. It was a battle to keep on with the conversation. You had to constantly whisper people if you missed some text on in mode. So, so yes, pretty hectic. Yeah. So by the end of the day, everyone got some recruits, and personally, I got three new members who are still a member to this day. Yeah, well done. Yeah, I know, right? That's better than anyone else did, as far as I know. I've only seen a few reports come in. Uh, it was quite busy. I was there myself, briefly. Um, it was packed. It was absolutely packed. I was surprised to see the Martin Hold the Court down for the day, given their stance of forget Stormwind, it, it's not there, you know. I was surprised to see them down. It was nice to see them take over the office again. Um... Absolute plethora of gills there. Um, too many to list right here at the moment. I say that. I didn't prefer a list. I should have. But there we go. I um, I was trying to get in contact with the organizers during the, during the past two weeks. I have uh, been unsuccessful in doing so. I know. I'm terrible. I, 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 should, I suck at this job. There we go. But just from just for the little time that I was there with, it was absolutely it was a great thing to see. Now, it could have used a bit more space, bit, spread things out a little more so there wouldn't have been as much of a cluster in terms of the chat and, indeed, just the crowds. But it was a nice atmosphere. There was a nice festival atmosphere about it. It was, it was great. It was lovely to see. It was nice to see the community working mm. together, you know, breaking down the usual, you know, little walls that built up around certain, you know, gills and all that. And that's just, just nice to see everyone interacting with each other. Really all good right. to see. Really good to see. Sort of like what the Stormwind Provincials are doing. Indeed. Exactly. They had, their, they had their wonderful market out in Duskwood um, yesterday. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Duskwood. I, I, I know, yes, I know. You love Duskwood. You've been there I so do love so, it. I, you I, do love your I, Duskwood. I love my Duskwood. You know one of them is a Night Nero. Oh my God, the Night Nero again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> You're Sorry. not letting this go. You're not letting this go. 
I love anyway, so much. We're, we're, anyway. Yeah. Again, lovely festival market, festival feeling. I say keep saying festival, but it really was. Nice crowd there. A surprising large crowd there, given how, you know, gloomy and grim dark that it is in Duskwood and Darkshire. Mm-hmm. Um, the Aldori Axiom were present. Um, the wonderful they were. Prime Davir was handing out Jonathan's crystals to anybody and everybody. The man had a crate and he was just handing them out. He also wrote a goat. I saw he was running a goat. He was? Yeah. I didn't see this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did. Oh, I wow. saw it. He was running a goat. It was quite funny. Oh, I was like, man. Oh, God. Like, I, hope so. I hope someone sends a picture into this. I need to see this. Oh, I, please. I, I don't think I, if anyone I has screenshots, think... I want to see this. Please, somebody, I, just I saw... give me a link. Sorry, I don't think I screenshot. screenshot. It's okay. It's okay, man. I, I'm, I'm asking the forum here. Seriously, if anyone has a screenshot, I want to see this. This sounds great. Most screenshots I have are black ones. Sorry. That's okay. It's okay. That's understandable. I mean, seriously, the black wind. I've heard so much about the RP. So much. Yep. I mean, you crashed a plane yesterday, didn't you? Mm. That we did. It was rather comical. You you have to imagine we were fighting some demons, and then suddenly we make this crazy escape plan, and in we try to make it, admit we do it, and then suddenly we just crash. It all goes down, we shut down, and we all die. And then a train comes out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 Earlier today, we were, um, I came on, on Renwin, uh, and I went up to George, and I was like, what, what, what are you doing? And then George was like, uh, like breaking a stick with his... But like leg or something. <laughs> so everyone was like, what the heck's going on? And then out of nowhere, this like Trent comes out of the woods and says, he tells us in this like simplistic form to, to get to tell us to get rid of the uh, the plane in the ground. And then George is just like, Nope, and just leaves me. And I'm like, fuck. And so I'm like, Richard! And like the other officers, like, get over here and talk to this guy. And I'm like, fuck this. And I walk up as well. <laughs> no, that's <quite> <laughs> that's, that's, that's and here, and here I thought you guys were professionals. No, we're not. I mean, we're not. This this is this is eye opening. Wow. Uh, I think Roman's being a bit too much of an inspiration to George because he's starting to start <laughs> George is starting to dress like him. Oh no. Oh yeah. you're not serious. It's oh, the leather it. uniform. It is quite it's quite the cool uniform though. It's the best uniform in the guild. <laughs> though, let's talk about Blackwing, because we've got a Blackwing guest here. We do, so, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not the answer host, so I can't ask questions, Ben. Oh I mean, god. I should... Oh lord, really? Yeah, sorry. Showing all these on me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to include you in this because you know you are involved in the guild. I am an officer, so I will give my yeah, input. Yeah, yeah. Um, James, kindly wake up. You're going to be involved in this too. No, James, I'm James, just, I'm no, just... no, hungover. Okay. I'm okay. just, uh, I'm just, uh, uh, I'm just. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm getting, I'm getting Actually, myself no. ready for the for my story time later. All right. So... Oh, wonderful. Okay, you get, you get your chair ready. You get your chair ready. Actually, no. Just remembered. Before we move on, we do have an order to follow. Mm-hmm. Teratil, you yeah. glorious hedonistic blood elf. Yeah. Anything happened to the horde? Oh, the horde. Well, no. No. No, nah, really. <laughs> no. Um. Wow. Really? I'm see, surprised. I, I, well, actually, in my uh, uh, in my click, uh, I was talking about uh, the horde. If I scroll really far up, you can probably just if I just uh, make really big fillers like like this, uh, I can probably get to it. And give you oh, examples of what we, you, what we talked about. It was very horde related. You're, talk. S- you're saying this, and I'm, I don't believe you. Oh, uh, it, it was well. Hold on. Well, all I'm hearing is the intense scrolling. I, I don't actually believe you. Uh, hold on. Just keep talking. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm going to sit here and judge you. I mean, what happened? What happened to being ready, man? What happened to being uh, ready? Um, I've got a list of stuff here. Okay, so I said I would. Um, I was talking to name. Um, and name. he's. Yeah, I could. I, well, as well. I was talking to Elanthus, uh, and he said, um, "Has there been a, a successful Grimtone chime?" And I said, "No, I don't think so." So he said, uh, uh, "I so I, I added on that there should be. It would spice up Torn roleplay, um, and that it'd be dominate, uh, dominated by like a new sort of thing, other than Spirit Wolves, of course." Um, and it would. Any, and then he said, "Any sort of roleplay would spice it up because considering how uh, Torn roleplay has its numbers." Uh, and then I said, well, I could do it, but I'm not the GM type, unfortunately. Okay. So you're looking to do a Grim Totem Guild? Uh, or yeah. Or at least helping so, have someone set up that in the community? Yeah, considering how much a lot of people like Grim Totem. Yeah. yeah no, I'm, surpri- I'm surprised there hasn't been. Uh, yeah, well, there may quite, have been, but I'm surprised there isn't yeah. one. Viewers, get to that. Uh, <laughs> make a Grim Totem Guild. I will join it. Um, I won't actually join it. I will actually interact with it on my turn. Um, I might join it. I'd look to make a yeah. again. I'm pretty sure a lot of people join it. That's, that's a good idea right there. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, there isn't a, yeah, there isn't a lot of uh, horde news, unfortunately, other than that. I mean, Blood Orgy, the Alamp, you know, Blood Orgy. Yeah, it's about that episode, as, yeah. Yeah, that's about as good. Uh, like that kind of just broke everyone out, did it? Yeah, everyone seems to be back in Orgrimmar, or doing other things. Oh, um, actually, speaking of Torrin, um, I should add, actually, that the Spirit Wolves is going up to Winter Spring to do a ceremony celebrating springtime. Oh, lovely. That sounds good. Yes, it's... So it's very, very, very... Uh, very peaceful, trying... very touring. I like it. Yeah, you know, I, I like the sound of it, indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, okay. that's as far as... Unfortunately, that's as far as my... Uh, it goes. Wow. Okay. I'm mm, surprised, I'm surprised. I like how we're... I like how we're all... The facts and CP alternating, just the shift. The yeah. focus of where things are happening. Mm -hmm. There we go, okay. Yeah, mostly touring. Yeah. Surprising. Yeah, well, in fairness, you might be a little biased in that regard. Uh, Jalbert, can you get some goblin news going? Thanks. <laughs> YouTube now. Well, going. actually, actually, there was something I didn't notice in the forums, and I'm not okay. surprised you weren't in attendance. You did again. You hedonistic, blood elf. What? You just. I, I. I love the phrase. I'm sorry. I'm gonna throw it at you whenever I get a chance. The Gearfist IBS celebrated their birthday yesterday. Oh yeah. Did they? Yes. Yes, they did. Oh. Okay. Yes, they did. It was a big threat. They've been praying for a month. You didn't get invited. Didn't... You, you weren't invited. I weren't invited. No. Oh wow. Oh wow, man! Sorry. Oh, that key campaign off for you now, is it? No, sorry. Uh, I'm not Damn. into not into goblin antics. Don't have regular anymore. My goblin. My okay. bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's tied at the horde section. It has rather neatly and quickly. Yep. Big sorry. contest last week. Ah uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> last week, week before, whatever. Oh, I'm getting confused. So, Crowthorn. Good morning. Good morning. Still here? And good. Good. I'm glad you are. We wouldn't have a show without you. So uh, it's my pleasure. I'm to all find... yours. Oh, sorry. Ooh. I said I'm all yours. Oh, oh, oh. It's like it's like ten wheels. <laughs> the red smoke up in here. Ooh. This is taking an interesting turn. <laughs> Might have to close off the show here. But no, in all seriousness, it's an absolute pleasure to finally meet you and speak to you. Um, I've been consistently impressed. And a little bit in awe of the Black Wind ever since I saw the original formation threads and hearing these stories from people who were either involved or had interacted with you. Um, unfortunately, the um, the platoon formed in a, around a period I was actually taking a break from the game. So um, I've only come back in the past few weeks, months, whatever. And it's been, it's been interesting just following back this log, these these escapades. Who has gone up to it's it's been absolutely incredible it's a really enjoyable read and I did want to speak I, to, I want to speak today about um in general now not just with with you in general about um creating such you know creating long arcs of role creating long arcs of storylines and I understand that the black one has a very has the very own unique brand of role play in this regard Depends on how you look at it. We focus on a variety of role play and different storylines. Sometimes we focus on interacting with other guilds and sometimes we prefer just being by ourselves and enjoying the story, arping with each other, perhaps using some DM characters. It depends on what we feel like. We strive to have always change, always something new, just so people always can feel we have a reason of being here. They're not just here just to stand some place. They're here because they want to. Do you have any tips or advice for people to try and stimulate that extra bit of interest in events? I can, if you want to stir some interest events, you have to stir interest, you have to make people trust you. You must know that you are a person who can tell stories. When you host an event, you must not use yourself as the center. The attendants are the center and the core. If you base a story on yourself, it will be boring. You have to play the characters, interact with them, and battle is not always the way. Drama, romance, comic, comic different genres all the time, so people can feel it changing, changing, and developing over a long course of time. You can make people feel close, or connected with a character or a story or a plot over just one week has to spend over a long time and it does come with some problems because when people join the guild they cannot c catch up with the story which is also why Blackwood closes recruitment so often we don't want people to be confused we can still join even though they are not part of the guild but it's preferred that we do not 
join in the middle of all if they do not know how to catch up with the story. Okay, okay, it's a good policy. I mean, there's countless times I've seen people come along to events just appearing in the middle of nowhere, no excuse, no background, just there and like, hey guys, what's happening? It's happened and, a few times for. It's it? happened a few times for yeah. us, but when it does happen, we do not think, oh, our character, we are such idiots. We try to interact with them and find a story for it. We don't judge people before we are RP with them. We make them make an impression. We do not listen to rumors. Ooh. I like it. I like it. Nice policy. I should add. Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I, I'm going to add this. Uh, I don't know why, but um, uh, so Crowthorn here uh, is an avid Harry Potter fan, and I always think he is a wizard. <laughs> Ge I genuinely think he is a wizard because when he does DM events, it's like I'm actually pulled into the story because he's made a character called, for example, I'll use my own character. Um, Renwin. Renwin's got a wife and two kids, uh, Sherwin and uh, Anais. But uh, Anais is a uh, child he doesn't have anymore. He thinks she's dead. But, uh, for example, Ma uh, Crowthorn has taken that, that character of Anais, uh, a non-existent character who's portrayed by no one, but just so I made up in story, backstory for me. He's taken it and used it as uh, a, a device for one of our antagonists, so one, my character will get really riled up against it, which I found was really smart and really cool. And it makes me a little kawaii desu. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had to say, I was just like, oh my god, that's my character. These references, these references. I know, there's so many cool references. Nice, nice. And also referencing back to Warcraft 3 as well. He does that a lot, oh. which I love. I love Warcraft 3, especially because it focuses on Kul'Tras in, in Frozen Throne. And... Kulturas is a touchy subject. You don't want to do too much because you can't do too much. You want to focus on the parts you can. So the references, the names and law we have from Frozen Thrones what we stick to. Otherwise we try to do our own RP based on our characters rather than just the kingdom. So we're based on the kingdom, we focus on all everything around us. Yeah, it seems we're more on to the guild, not the kingdom. So even though we wear the green anchor, we're not really like portraying it, sort of. No, I like that. I mean, that takes away from the usual the thing you see an awful lot of people who they place much emphasis on where the character is from and having that define them more than the characters on actions and life defining them. I mean, how many times yeah. have you seen other people emphasizing exactly where they're from on their um, on their tooltips and the descriptions, like getting it perfectly right? This is where I'm from. This is my accent. This is this is you know where I've grown up. This is emphasizing me. This is me in a nutshell. But your country doesn't define you. Your choices define you. Exactly. And it's nice, especially from a guild of Terrassians, to see that you're focusing purely on the now and the future. You're not just dwelling on where you've come from. I mean, how many, how many Gilneans are just on the one trick pony of being Gilnean? You know? A lot. There's too many. Too many. In the restaurant nightmare room. Right. Um... I believe I had some more here for uh, for Crowthorn. Yes, yes, I did. You run a lot of events in um, the time of the, of the platoon. A lot of short events, mm -hmm. long events, all time together quite nicely. Um, the regular updates on your thread and the AA keep keeping you abreast of that at least. I was going to ask, did, was there any event in particular that you were either running yourself or were just participating in and that you felt was just, wow, this is... This is what, what this is the best. This this is just incredible. This is this is an experience. Basically, what I I'm take here a, is, what's your most memorable event from the platoon? I I cannot pick one event. I can pick different scenarios. It depends on the story because when you're a storyteller, you have to feel for every character here equally much. But to draw an example, people will already know of. I'll pick the death of one of the anta antagonists. It's the same antagonist who kidnapped Renwood's doctor. And he died in such a way that it made the story continue. And eventually it made Renwin look like the bad guy, even though he was the good guy. Ooh. And at some point, the platoon split up because of his death. Someone else came in and took control because he, he blamed them for killing him. And he wasn't really hoard or anything. And Renwin, he still stood. He was this point of hatred. Everyone hated him. And eventually, it caused every Blackwind officer to split up, and it made the guild disband eventually. And yeah. now, half a year later, these officers are antagonists. 
So from being the friendly faces, we became the evil faces, and that's how the story develops. You put in some characters, but the story's not about these NPCs, invisible faces. It's about what we made the player characters do, what choices we end up taking. And then, living, some... with, and then living with the consequences afterwards as well. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's something I really like as well, is how how everyone's characters progress to something they're sometimes not. So, for example, my uh, with Renwin, um, everyone normally sees him as the dick, you know, the, the absolute douchebag. Uh, nobody likes him a lot. But and everyone seems to know, oh, it's like, oh, we all went, we all did something bad. Whose fault is that? It's Renwin's because he's the bad guy. Um, no, there's a transition. Even though I act like a dick, um, I make him act like a dick, be a dick, uh, just uh, not really... Be cool. What he says is normally quite wise, and he normally ends up being the good guy, even if his views are a bit like uh, narrow-minded. Like he doesn't like criminals at all. That's why with Crowthorn, when he was portraying Hadrian Crowthorn or Wilma, um, whenever every time he was just with him, uh, Roman always hated his guts. Like he never fucking went with him. He was just like, oh, go away, um, and always tried. Like whenever something bad happened to uh, Crowthorn, he never really cared. Um, it's like, but like when there was a storyline which involved it, uh, involved an antagonist uh, take over the uh, Black Winds because Crowthorn weren't missing. This was like uh, right, um, right before it disbanded. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 I made it, uh, me and Mickey decided that Renwin would sell out Blackwind. So we, we, we took the Blackwind, we took Blackwind to so the officers and I, we took Blackwind to Norfolk. And then this guy like was like, surprise, like, it's the bad guy that we've been fighting for ages. And he like takes over Blackwind forcibly. And then Renwin would like hop to his side and he's just like, ha ha, and like falls his arm like with a condescending smirk. Um, and everyone's like, oh, Renwin, you knob, we knew you'd turn on us. And then, but nobody knows, Renwin is actually the good guy because he turns back on the guy's back. So he turns, he cheats, he's like, he's like Severus Snape. He's, a, he's like Severus <laughs> Snape. Turning back into Harry Potter. Oh, exactly. He's Severus Snape, betrays that guy, and also sort of betrays everyone, but not really. So he's like, the, he's like the good guy, like Severus Snape. Except he doesn't die by a snake. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> yeah. Though I, I should add, um, my most favorite uh, event would probably be the part, um, the time when we were in Northrend in the Boreen Tundra, which is when... I finally got to use the God Cannon for the first time ever. Oh, God, right. <laughs> yes. the God Cannon. Yes, so good. We were fighting uh, the Warsong clan, uh, Warsong people. Who was it again, Mickey? It was the Cromish Offensive, I believe. Yeah, we were okay. The, we were playing the Cromish Offensive. It was like uh, uh, Blackwind and uh, someone else. Rude, rude, uh, rude, rude Guild. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, ninth, ninth Battalion. Yeah, so Ninth Battalion, was Ninth Battalion, uh, Blackwind. We were fighting them, and everyone went over to near Warsong. So they were fighting and something, and then, and then like some people went on top of Warsong with Griffins to like infiltrate and take out Gromash. Um, meanwhile, I was back by uh, Valgard. No. Uh, Boring Tundra is Valiant's Keep, isn't it? Or yeah, Keep, that, Valiant's Keep. I was by Valiant's, Valiant's Keep. Keep yeah. Um, yeah. and basically, you know, do you know of the uh, the big cannons in Hellfire, on the, like that uh, adjacent to uh, Honor Old? Oh Lord. The big really? ones. <laughs> yeah, that's what God Cannon is. You were one of those? Yeah, so I was on one of those. <laughs> as, the, as the bombardier, I was. I was on those. And I was like, let's do this. And no, we, we, we betrayed it so that um, the God Cannon is like really big, but it's really inaccurate, but it's really <laughs> explosive. So basically what happened is that I shot one shell, and it went about halfway across the tundra, uh, and then it dropped on like where, where Blackwind and... Um, uh, it was supposed to go where uh, Gromash and were fighting Blackwind. Um, and because it's inaccurate, it was like off by like a, like a, a really big bit. But it was great how Mickey portrayed it because I did the emote of firing it. And then when he portrayed it hitting the ground, he portrayed it missing to the distance. But when it hit the ground, it made a giant like explosion in a crater. So much so that it covered everyone like dirt and like made everyone fall over. And I was just like, holy shit, this gun is amazing. <laughs> so I was like, that was the best one. <laughs> that was probably the best because I was like I had like a ear to ear grin on my face like a Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> There's only two times when we used the cannon. The second time was in this place when we were fighting the Ramas Rakia, and the kill leader is an ir Iridar and he's quite large. And when he came marching up upon us, we could not stop him, so we pulled out of the cannon and aimed it at him. 
Didn't really work though. <laughs> no, no, we missed. Yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah oh, they dear. missed, and then and then Crowthorn got nabbed by the demons. Uh, then Crowthorn died. Yeah, he died. That's consequences. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good so, little consequences. Yeah, yeah. That's our I, I, favorite one, though. That's, yeah, favorite one. Surely the best way to deal with an arrow dodge is sending the entirety of the wisps. We should have learned that from the third uh, war. We ran out of wisps. Yeah, we, we ran, ran out of wisps. wisps. We have so to, we can't, we have to we reload have any... now. It took 10,000 years for the for that last patch. You know, we have to reload. Yeah, we don't have any uh, immortality to like sacrifice either. <sighs> Damn shame. Damn shame. Yep. Bloody elves. One trick pony. Yeah, damn night elves. Yeah. <laughs> Eat Mr. Night Elves. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Exilers, Exilers. Oh, God, oh. yeah, yeah. All right, okay. um, I was actually going to ask as well as a little counterpoint. Mm -hmm. Any events, Crowthorn, that didn't go to plan? Any events that, and when I say go to plan, I mean out of character, not I, go to plan. I can um, say when we plan events, we, ne we never make a plan, we just make the introduction. But sometimes even the introduction goes wrong. I can come with an example already yesterday. Yesterday evening, we were to fight Philborn and Ramsrak here because Blackwing is quite large. We can ha have up to 25 people at a time. So we had to find some enemies. And the plan was we will split up in two groups and fight a guild each. But Philborn had only one person online. If that didn't make, uh, that will not make a good enemy. Imagine 10 people on one person. So yeah. we had to improvise. So we. All everyone of us, we went to Firamus right here and we asked the guildmaster, Melanagas, to DM some demons and had to multitask so everyone could have someone to fight, to be entertained, and somehow it went really great. And I experienced when the plan doesn't go right, when it all goes wrong, it eventually gets fun because if you stick to a plan, it feels plastic, it's not right, it has to come natural, you have to do whatever feels right from an in-character point of view. And that's how the story develops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. Um, I mean, I've seen myself a lot of events where it's been, you can tell there's just one rigid plan. And if you, can, cares, you can always tell if it's a script or not. Yeah. And I can advise Dungeon Masters to not prepare any modes for rate warnings. Mm. Prepare the story and the characters in your head. How do you react? How are they? What's the background? But do not decide what we will do. It's all right to have certain scenes in your head and have something to strive for, but do not do anything to reach that point because then the participants do not matter. Then you're just telling a story if you're not living the story. Mm. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. Um, sorry, for oh me, God, my train of thought has gone there. Oh, damn. <laughs> I have to in that one as well. Oh, Lord. Sorry. Sorry, Crowthorn. Um, Crap, no, oh, sorry, I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. I okay. lost it. Shit. Uh, um, Grumpa, anything to throw on yourself here? Anything you want to ask? No? Yes, what oh. is the Black Wind's plans for the future? We usually plan ahead, not what we will actually do, but where we will go. We travel a lot, and for April, we're going to. First, we're going to get out of Dark Shore because we've got some demons chasing us and we have no plane to escape with. And then we'll nip, da nip down to Tanaris. We're currently uh, preparing some events with the Sandstone Bandits and that's because we have a lot of gold and we like gold. So we're going to try to steal the gold. <laughs> and afterwards, we are going to the spine of Kalandor. We're going to be a couple of days late, but that's fine. And then we'll try to interact with the different guilds and see where it goes. Afterwards, I think we... Maybe we're going to return to North Watch Hall. There's still some plans I want to see through. For example, I want to be more active and see. And I have this idea in my head of Blackwing and other guilds just all crashing down, using submarines, dash ear, ships, and all that. Oof, submarines, haven't those in a while. Otherwise, that's about it. Sounds good. Sounds pretty good. Oh, man, this is killing me. I had something. I had something. Oh, Lord. I've been to ask you all day. All day. Oh, okay. So this is the one thing I was going to ask you. This is absolute torture. Oh, we, no. we leave it. We move on. Um, I'll think of it. I'll think of it. We move on. I have 
One more question. Oh, okay. Right. Sorry, jump One the gun. more question. Shoot my heart. We asked this to Edgesa last week, and it was, if you could change one thing about AD, what would it be? I will try to make people realize it does not matter about how many come for an event or how many are on your guild or how many people you RP with. I have the policy and principle. I will host the event even if there's only one person. And if there's no one coming, I will wait minimum an hour before leaving. You can have an amazing story with just one person. I have a friend whom I developed a story for over three years and the best RP I have is with him, just us two. Do you remember that one time um, when it was uh, it was Ebenhart? Uh, we went up to, I think it was uh, Daramir Lake or Lodomir Lake. I think it was Lodomir Lake. It was in Western Plaguelands. Um, there, there he had an event using his uh, characters where we had to go into Scholomance, uh and kill someone. I can't remember who. Um, I remember that even uh, it was not a Blackwind even or just no, like it, was to say it. it was before yeah. Blackwind. Yeah, it was before Blackwind. Um, and I remember specifically that um, when I left the event, it was still going. Um, and then I remember coming on the next day, and then I heard that the DM, uh, it was Ebenhart, right? Yeah, yeah. He had stayed on to he had he had stayed on until everyone had left. So he had kept on um, DMing the event with one person to about two a.m. Wow. Because they, they were they were looking for a character in the story. And that one person kept going at it till like about about two a.m. in the morning. I was like, "Whoa, that, commi that, commi that is commitment! That commitment!" I was like, "That commitment!" Holy crap! And even only ends when every person is gone. You continue as long as people want to. Wow. And I can say, Eben Hart, he was also a black gun officer until he was thrown into the bad guy. So yeah. right now he's playing a bad guy, a black wind. He's trying to dismantle Blackwind and take it into his own favor. Yep. Hey, Mickey, uh, so how about those 50 gold coins? Oh, well, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you do not know the story, it was because Ebonhardt, he walked up to my character, George, and he challenged him. He wanted dominance over Blackwind, so if he went into a boxing fight. And my character bet him yellow and blue since he was a boxer himself. But Renwin said, if George lost, he will give him 50 gold. And a handshake with my son. And a handshake. Yeah. But George, when he defeated Ebonhardt, he went over to kick him in the face. That's against, which the, is rule. against the rules. <laughs> so he lost. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, wow. He lost because yeah. of the kick. Oh, I can damn. also say that. But I can say my character was trying to kill the man because he really didn't want him. He was really furious and anger. Even though it was against the rules, the law, he tried to kill him. He was lost in his mind. Yeah, so I didn't know. Roman didn't know that. So he he stopped the fight anyway because he kicked him. So he lost. And then and then when James got up, he was like, "Oh my god, did you see that?" He was like, "He he he used tricks on my mind." And I was like, "Yeah, sure he did." <laughs> but he kicked him in the face. So that's against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, with no, any up. Oh, sorry, sorry, carry on, sorry. With any RP, there's always something behind the scene. In fact, seeing yourself the two characters fighting, but something also happened. Ibanhard said George used magic, magic, but George said Ibanhard used magic. So something happened there. It's that depth and detail that makes the story continue. And those who are observant, they will notice it and try to look more into it and see what it was. There's also a reason. It's not just coincidence. Nothing is coincidence. There's always a reason behind everything. I'm done. Okay. I remembered the Dungeon. question. I remember the question at long last. You've been involved with the Infinite Dark storyline. Um, do you still have that chart? We still have a chart. We, we don't. Even ch we don't. Well, we, we do not, but we had it for a long time. Yeah, and I didn't we do made anything it, with it. We made a threat where we challenged all evil because we had the chart, but no one had managed to beat us, so we challenged all evil and... As of recent, we have won so far, but yesterday we lost. Rather hard, indeed. So who is it now? Um, Wait, where is it, JQ? Uh, well, see, um, there was nothing... We, I thought we were doing nothing with the Shard, because I asked Mickey about it, and he was like, well, just do something with it. And I was like, I can't DM, though. So I said, I'm going to give away my Shard. Um, so what really happened to it in character was that Renwin sold it for... Um, uh, 
uh, gift for his wife. <laughs> Sorry. He gave it to a gnome and he got, and he got a gem. So he gave it to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody, you, nobody sold. Kn- you sold all the powerful artifacts didn't know that Flair has ever gotten. He, he, he told to the... He told, okay, we, um, basically, there's only one scientist in our guild, which is um, Thermon, uh, Lex Thermonis, who is also called Professor Hat. Um, I, gave it, I gave the shot to Professor Hat, and he said that it was capable of uh, rejuvenating magic. And I was just like, well, we got Alice, uh, our, our officer, who's a massive dick. Um, oh, Roman, oh, Roman doesn't oh. like her. Um, uh, and she, uh, so Roman was just like, well, we got a heater already, so we don't really need it. So uh, he just like sold to some gnome and got a uh, uh, really expensive gem for his wife. That's it. JQ, you do know how George bit Ebenhard so bad he almost killed him. Yeah, you can't guess do that. What it will do, guess what it will do to Redwin. Roman's a that. cheat though, so you won't, you can't. You, got, <laughs> you, can, you can try and go at him with fists. You can go, you can go at him with fists all you like, um, oh, okay? Wow. But he will whip out a gun and shoot you in the leg. <laughs> Without trepidation, without at all. Oh god! <laughs> well, if you get no one's name, let me know. I'm, uh, I'm curious yeah, myself. Thankfully, nobody knows that, so that's cool. Damn! I'm gonna go beat up every gnome I find now. Get that shirt. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, my Legolon has the orb. <laughs> <laughs> Stole that it was... from Yadriel. That that's was... another storyline. It's, uh, we're two blood knights. Okay, that's another story, though. You and these blood knights. Will you? Li- yeah, oh my, my servants God. in darkness. Oh. Okay. God. Yeah, you that's just, that's actually old you, horde news. You. Yes. And even is. dark stories yes, are over. Yeah. yeah. Right. I think it's about time for uh, story time with Grumper, if he's ready. <clears throat> oh Lord. Is it, I, I, can I can I go yet? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. It's, yeah. it's now time. Um, well, well, good. So, I was debating with these lot earlier about what I could talk about considering the topic you guys wanted we really need a true expert on which we should be getting for episode 4 Epis- yes episode 4 I think episode 3 has a really good so episode I, coming episode, episode, episode we we're actually organised we've got we've plans for a couple of weeks which is quite nice but so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to dive in. I dived into Wowpedia earlier and I thought okay let's see something that's big which people know about but not maybe not know all the details of and I came up with the third war uh you some people better know it as the events of Warcraft 3 and Warcraft 3 the Frozen Throne um the third war itself though was only the main game the expansion was the full out of it effectively Mm-hmm. And so it pretty much it begins with the scourge of Lordron and ends with the Battle of Mount Hygel. And effectively, the Third War is all about the Burning Legion's invasion of Azeroth after 10,000 years since the Sundering. Major, so pretty much the outcome is victory for us mortals. Fantastic, otherwise we wouldn't have no world left. The Burning Legion is defeated. We sadly see the destruction of Lordron. My beloved Dalaran, don't worry, we rebuild it later, lads, don't worry. Quothalas, there's another casualty. Basically, Dalaran every seven, e- basically, five of the seven kingdoms of, of, of the Alliance. Except for Kothalas, hell yeah, and Strong, Strong Wind. A prison. <laughs> J- joke's on you too. Strong, strong, guard, strong Guard survives. Sort of. Can we really call it surviving? Anyway, um, well, we do not know if Kothalas uh, survived. This, yeah. We don't know. Morology says it's coming, but he doesn't want to say anything. He's just telling over. I don't he's think he's it's, it's dead, though. We have seen reference of it. Yeah. In before anyway, James back in there. Yeah. Continue, uh, good, good, good professor. He means you, well, James. So we, the, the Sunwell... I know. <laughs> the Sunwell's pretty much... Just, the Sunwell's destroyed... And nor just all the world tree is heavily damaged. The night elves lose their immortality. The burning legion, though, takes heavy damage. They lose their primary command structure. Um, the high elven race is completely obliterated. Not completely, but just very high much, 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 much. No, M- many dead. Much many, many dead. It, almost driven to extinction. Many dead. Uh, the human, the humans of Lordron mostly flee to Stormwind or Theramore. At which point they uh, the these the Scourge. Uh, some. Stop the Scourge. I'll stop. I'll stop. I'll be here. I'm sorry. 
Well, I'll, t- I'll give up. It's fine if you guys want to talk. Oh, God. Go no. On. Go. Carry on. Carry on. I'm joking, man. I'm joking. Carry on. It's good. It's good. The Scourge... Some of the Scourge free themselves and become the Forsaken. Uh, in in, 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 in Stormwage is freed after 10,000 years of imprisonment. And we have the birth of the Sun Elves. You mean Blood Elves? That's pretty much the entire war. I said the Blood Elves, didn't I? No, you said the Sun Elves. Elves. <laughs> what are you the said the Sun Elves. Is that, is that a guild? Isn't that a guild? Have I, have no. I, been, I think I've been playing too much. I think I've been playing too much Netherwinter. You have been playing a bit um, too much Netherwinter. Mm-hmm. Probably. Um, the Blood Elves. So anyway, the, yeah. you had the Bell Regents. Well, I can't pronounce. Well, Regents, I can't pronounce that word Re- ever. Regent. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. You have the mortal races against the Burning Legion. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you if you if you ever look on the WoW Wiki page, Wikipedia page, if you look down the if you look down the mortal races, you see so many crosses from where you've lost so many things. It's ridiculous. But uh, the casualties for the mortal races is heavy, very heavy. But Burning Legion near annihilation, so fantastic for us. We lived for another day, and actually they come back a bit later on, but that's not a problem. Um, so pretty much the beginning of the Third War is uh, the fall of Lordaeron, uh, and how pretty much the entirety of the world, the civilized world that we know and love from the previous games, Warcraft One and Warcraft Two, and that's pretty much left in limbo because after the fall of Lordaeron and Call for Last and. Um, we don't see much else. We don't know what we don't know what's happened to Stormwind. We don't know what's happened to, Col- to Colteras or any other kingdoms. Gilnaeus is still walled off this point, so we don't know what's going on. So we see so pretty much you're left in limbo, and that's I, I think that's quite something Blizzard does well. We don't see into the World of Warcraft itself what happened, and for Colteras we do see we do see what's going on with them in the Thrones and Throne with um, the founding of the Duratar campaign. But from from the fall of Lordaeron, we have the human expedition, which goes west, along with orcs. The orcs meet up with the trolls on the way, and the trolls join the horde, and that's where we get Vol'jin, who later becomes war chief of the horde. Spoiler alert. You um, should have said that before. Well, every project I've watched since we, the math is it by now, so it doesn't really matter. We two weeks ago, I mean. I can call it spoiler. Yeah. Um... Anyway, so the anyway, so the humans land and they found Theramore. The orcs land, meet up with Tauren and Tr Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh boy. Uh-oh. Anyway, yes, they, they do meet up with the Tauren, who are the best race in the horde, by the way, my ad. Um Who are being unfortunately uh, persecuted by the centaur at this point. Okay, we've lost him. Okay, I'll continue on his behalf. Yes, they and then they begin to found Orgrimmar. Uh okay, continue, Ben. There's someone coming in my room. Oh, wow, guys. The production value, the quality. I don't have an Orgrimmar. I'm Alliance. I don't got this. I know what. what? Oh, good thing you invited me here. Oh, God. Step in. Step in, oh. guest host. Save the day for us. Please. Orgrim- Orgrimmar was beginning to be constructed after the Third War. It was the goblins of okay. Ratchet who did it. And there was some trouble in the tunnels under Orgrimmar. Because it was full of kobolds and gnolls and other stuff. And the orcs in the Third War, they fought across the northern continent. They were fixed on their warsome clan who drank the blood of Manoroth. Because Chrome Hillscream was unable to control himself, he believed he needed power to survive the demons once again. So he tried to use the power to empower himself and his clan. Unfortunately, the blood, the power, corrupted him and the others to join the demons. And Thrall, who arrived in Kalimdor with and came with the Taran trolls, he went up to Ashenvale and found Crum. And alongside Gina Proudmoor, he saved him in a way. He saved his soul. And after that point, Thrall and Crum went to the Demon Canyon in Ashenvale and destroyed Manoroth, which we see in the end of the campaign in Walker Three, the Orc campaign. Can I say the quote? Can I say the quote? You can say the quote. Okay. This is Grom. Thrall, the blood haze has lifted. The demon's fire has burned out of my veins. I have freed myself. And the Thrall's like, no, old friend. You freed us all. And then like pans up. It's quite amazing. 
it, it, it is. It's pretty cool. And I'm going to go kick his ass in Warlords. In this wonderful, wonderful, shocking development. I won't be able to do That's it. Quite... I'll be honest with you. I will not be able to do it. I won't be able to fight Grom. I just, I won't be able to do it. I love him too much. Even if his voice... In I, know the, I, know, I know the entire cinematic of Heart. Sorry. <laughs> it's a great cinematic. It's a fantastic cinematic. So predictable. I knew you would come. And I see you brought the mighty health cream. His blood is mine, as is your whole mid begotten race. And then, like, he throws like the doom hammer at Manoroff, and it goes like, through his like wing. And he's like, a worthy effort, but futile. And he like comes forth, and he's like, boom. He's like, the boy you believed could be oh saved, but he God. didn't know what burns within your soul. Oh God! But in your heart, you know we are but the same. And then, like, he like Grom like runs at Manoroff, and then he, like slams his axe into his head. And, it slams Gore Howe into his chest, and then like, Manrolf just explodes for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why he dies. Yeah, the explosion. It's going boom! <laughs> and then Thrill being Thrill survives, gets up, and like nothing ever happens with the rules to let well, look, Jaina or... and Medivh know everyone's alive. Look, Yay! Look, look, Orc Jesus can do what he wants. Demons explode in his face, it's no big deal. Yeah, it's also Chris Metzen. Mm. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, that, that man has so much plot armor. Everything he voices has so much plot armor. Yep, Zandalari, boom. Lovely, lovely, wonderful. So, James, you're back. So, with Manoroff defeated, it was time for the final confrontation. Archimon begins his dramatic ascent on the world tree in Aldersil. The great alliance of humans, night elves, horde, because I can't really call them orcs, because they're Tauren and trolls there too, along with dark trolls, which were the ancestors of the night elves, and furbolgs, yes, the furbolgs are in the great alliance. And what happens is that they do their best hold of Archimonds, but they pretty much fail, and then... And then, and then uh, the, the Wisp shotgun is fired. Uh, yes, and then Mafurium, Mafurium goes, Oi, Wisps, you just do nothing, attack. And Archimonds eaten alive by the Wisps, and the world is saved. Although the Night Elves lose their immortality, the human kingdoms are pretty much obliterated, and the High Elves are no longer a race, the are. Orcs have pretty much got nowhere to live... The Blood Elves are pretty much buggered. And the Scourge had now has control of the majority of what? I don't know why, but in Warcraft 3, a lot of things explodes. So Nordrasil explodes. Malfur <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Malfurion. No, not Malfurion. Um, Manoroth explodes. Uh, yeah. Dalaran crumbles. Dalaran explodes. It doesn't explode, it crumbles. Tenorus dies. <laughs> so that is a dramatic cutscene, by the way. The whole. Um, Succeeding you, father. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing, son? I'm succeeding you. Boom! And then you, you go into like, um, yeah, crazy stuff. Okay, we do have an event, by the way. So, um, like right now, it's, oh. it's we're six. Me and Mickey are sixty minutes late. Sorry. Oh wow. Oh, wow. oh and it's no, it's no oh. matter. I've got my officers to take care of it. Yeah. And too. when Mickey said um, the the horde arrived, the orcs arrived with the trolls and Torin. The orcs arrived with the trolls, but they met up with the Torin a bit later. Just I know, to clarify that. It was that. my mistake. Yeah, Torn were getting old, but owned by the centaur. Yeah. Wolves help them out. The centaur I never, I never got that. To become a... I never understood you mean? that. I mean, the Torn just looked like the wreck any centaur that came near them. Yeah, I, well, the centaur are bigger than Torn. Yeah, but Torn just like, oh, you know, stand the ground, wreck stuff quite easily. I mean, the carry on blue, must, the carry on blue you tree take in, weapons. You must take into account that the Torn were scattered. They were not united. That's yeah, they were. Yeah, they weren't united. Yeah, yeah, that's fair point. Yeah. Okay. Now they're united under Bane Bloodhoof, High Chieftain of the Bloodhoof Thorn. You know <laughs> that guy. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Lovely. My favorite. My favorite guy. Are you sure? Yeah. He's guy? Sorry. Yeah, he's kind of cool. Okay. I'm a big Thorn guy. You know. Yeah. My my, my horde main is. Sorry about that, viewers. Yes, we uh, we do apologize for the. Um, intermittent connection and the. Uh, General all over the place of that, of that topic. Um, Throw it into a hole. Grandpa. It, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. We make it up here. We make it up here. Promise. Do you know? Do you know that you know Admiral Taylor? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a zip at the back of his neck. If you pull it down, it's Bane Bloodhoof. Because <laughs> 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 they're voiced by the same person. <laughs> oh, so. that, I want to see that now. I, I, I can't remember who else is how else he voices as well. He voices someone else, but I just can't remember. <laughs> that, expl that explains Taylor's concern with uh, Anduin then, definitely. Speaking of, speaking of, 
Also, you know Nurazal, the, oh, uh, the, okay. the the um, the um celestial the celestial of the West. The ox. Which is equally, the, yeah, the ox. The equally, ox. equally, zipper the back of the neck, pull it down, vein blood <laughs> hoofer. <laughs> <laughs> Same voice actor. Quite amazing. <laughs> I do like how Winnie the Pooh voices. Is War 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 the Walker Joe? Winnie the Pooh is War Walker Joe. I love that. Just that's yeah. such. All right. I know, but it kind of, it kind of. I don't know. Is he getting typecast? I mean, he's playing. He's playing fat bear people. I mean, is that all the guy does? What does he do? Not much. You know the person who voiced. Um, you know the person who vo voices Vol'jin as of a five point one. Also voices Lee Everett in the Walking Dead game, which is amazing. Doesn't yeah. He, doesn't, he, doesn't he also voice someone in Warcraft 2? Yeah, I think he does. No, Starcraft 2. Yeah. Um, oh man, no one's yes. voicing, No one's taking claim to Warcraft 2 voices. They were terrible. Yeah, but, oh, yeah. Go go back to Warcraft 2. Listen to Grom Hellscream's voice in that. I swear to God. Oh, someone, that's so funny. Someone has his balls in the voice grip. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Grom, please. For the horde. <laughs> and okay. the singing orc fucking sailors. Yeah. What? Just, just what? I, I... And then suddenly, dragons. <laughs> yeah. Again, Deathwing's voice. What was that? I know. <laughs> it's oh, like man, yelling on from puberty, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it was. The, the entire game was. Well, no, everyone had gone through puberty except for Turalyon. Turalyon had the greatest. Was voice. The... You mean Turalyon? Yeah. Turalyon. Uh, Turalyon. Uh, that's what I'm saying. I've got James. Uh, uh oh, we're losing James again. Oh no, oh dear. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> we are not having a good evening today, are we? We're not. We really aren't. I'm, I'm, I'm considering just taking this entire segment, chopping it out, re recording yeah. it at a later period, putting it okay, in. Okay, he's gone, he's gone again. Should we, should we end it because he keeps going? Yeah, I think we'll, um, we'll, we'll move on from. We move on from Grumpa's story time, which appears to be Gr I'm Grumpa back. having a fit in the chair. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine. It's just my beard is in my face. <laughs> 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 I can breathe. I can't breathe. You shall not be in. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a tendency to fall asleep. Oh, can I just say? G G um, Grumpa really reminds me of Gandalf the Grey. I could just imagine him going around um, Dalaran and doing the thing that he did in The Hobbit, which is like, and he like bashes his like um, staff against the floor, and this like giant light comes around him. It's just like, what is the point in that? Okay, I thought you were going to be blowing smoke rings. That works too. Okay, so yes, I do like shooting fireworks out of nowhere. That's quite fun. In I conclusion, have, I have never seen you fire fireworks. In conclusion, I am Theratho Lightcross. Oh, I am Roger Kendrigo. Ah, before before we go, I've got to give a shout out to someone. I promised them I'd give him a shout out. Okay, go on. Carry on. Castain has been has been a legend and been doing so many maps for people, and he did one for me earlier in the week, and it was it's amazing. I said to him, I'll give him a shout out because he's done such amazing work. So Castain, your work is improving RP for everyone in AD. And if you ever if you need a map for a campaign, talk to him and he'll sort you out. Oh, yeah, Thulan um, also did something uh, for me, and Mickey, which was the uh, Question: yeah, he, how, what's, what's he charge? He didn't charge. How much did you charge us, Mickey? Nothing. Charge for the side. Yeah. Or the, the the entire Culturas picture, the map. No. Oh, for map, he didn't charge us anything. We got it for free. Yeah. Damn, you got all that for free? He's very yeah. reasonable with his prices. He was a Black Queen member at a particular point of time, and we all created a part of the map. For example, I created the Queenston Islands, I, and some members created the town Cubitune. I, I made Cre Cre Crestful. I do all Crestful. Nice. That was all me. How much, how, much, how much does he charge roughly, though, James? I mean... It says on the uh, thread. Um, it says on the thread, don't worry. I mean, Violet, Violet Port, if you've looked at Violet Landing. By the port, I'm half asleep. By the landing, which is what he did for me, cost me 1.2k, which is very cheap. Considering yeah, what he does, the quality, he, what he does, yeah, that's pretty good. He, he spends hours on these things. By the way, can, talking about art, can someone, if you're an artist and you're listening to this, can someone do art of my torn? Thanks. I will give a lot of money. How much you want? Just I will give you it. <laughs> and a shout out. On. Yeah, that's a shout out for me. Artists, port to me. That's Renwin with an accent with an accent of the e. Clawheart, Marin, or Legolon. Good 
Good old there, everyone. There you go. All right. Okay. That's it. All right. Wonderful. Yep. Ciao. Bye. No, I don't.